How's everybody doing today? Make some noise so they can hear you inside. My name is Joe Gussler. I'm president of the Central PA Building Trades and a co-chair of Clean Jobs for PA. 675 family, family sustaining jobs at Three Mile Island are on the chopping block immediately, and many more could follow. The nuclear industry supports roughly 16,000 jobs across the Commonwealth. The Pennsylvania legislature needs to take action now to save these jobs. They have to be as serious about preserving good jobs as they are about creating new ones. Just last week, Governor Wolf held a press conference to announce that Pennsylvania will join 24 other states in the Climate Alliance. To meet these clean energy goals, we need our nuclear plants, all of them. Closing TM. Yeah. Closing TMI alone would negate the environmental gains of all the wind and solar currently in the state. There is a common sense approach on the table now. Representative Tom Mahaffey has rolled out House Bill 11 that would value, yeah, give it up for Tom. House Bill 11 would value nuclear energy in the Alternative Energy Portfolio Standard, the AEPS. The carbon-free energy produced at TMI is the equivalent of taking 8 million vehicles off the road. This is a very personal issue for me. I was raised off wages earned at Three Mile Island. My dad spent most of his working career as a tradesman at TMI. We need action now. TMI is slated for closure this September. And remember, there are no do-overs. Once a nuclear plant closes, it is not coming back online, and those jobs are gone forever. Uh, we have a great lineup of speakers for you today. And first up, I'd like to introduce from the Boilermakers International Union, Mr. Martin Williams. <laughs> Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Is labor in the house? Yeah. Say, is labor in the house? Yeah. I, I know Philly's in the house. Where's Philly at? Yeah. yeah. How, about, how about Pittsburgh? Where's my Pittsburgh brothers and sisters? Yeah. Central PA, make some noise. Yeah. All right. It is great to be here to talk about something so important uh, not just to our members and our workers, but to the entire Commonwealth. Uh, we've been working for almost two years with the Nuclear Powers Coalition because we understand the positive impact that nuclear power has on our communities and the, uh, the opportunities that nuclear power affords our members. But uh, Joe, I, I, I have to admit that I'm a little surprised that we even need to be here. Over the past two years, as we've talked to folks and, and public officials, whether at a, a press conference or a hearing, we talk about the value of nuclear power, the response is overwhelmingly positive. We say that nuclear power is 40% of the state's electricity, 93% of the state's carbon-free electricity. It's an industry that supports 16,000 jobs. generates two billion dollars in economic activity and when we talk about these statistics the response is great amazing yes we we support you we want to do something but yet here we are here we are without a solution here we are wondering whether hundreds or thousands of workers are going to lose their jobs. Here we are wondering about the communities that depend on nuclear power, what their future is going to be like, and how to deal with the lost revenue. 
Here we are wondering why other states have taken action to preserve their nuclear industry and Pennsylvania has yet to take action. Here we are. Brothers and sisters, this is not difficult stuff. You know, when, when Joe and I testified last year at uh, one of the nuclear caucus hearings, Joe gave one of the best lines, I think, that's been said throughout this whole debate. If a business announced that it was going to create 16,000 jobs in Pennsylvania and generate nearly $2 billion in economic activity, the state would be falling over itself to bring them here. The deal would be done within the blink of an eye. Brothers and sisters, preservation of jobs has to be as important as job creation, and that needs to be a part of our message going forward and, and through to the end. So when we finish here today and you go to walk the halls of the Capitol and talk to your state rep or state senator, ask them some very basic questions. Are you for good paying family sustaining jobs? Do you support the communities that depend on nuclear power? Are you for a reliable and resilient energy grid? Are you for baseload carbon free electricity? The answers to those questions must be yes, 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 and yes. Brothers and sisters, it is time to get this done. It is time to get this done for our members. It's time to get it done for our communities and our families. It is time for Pennsylvania to lead and show that it supports the state's nuclear industry and the workers of the industry. Let's get this done. It is time to get it done. Let's go. All right, next up we have one of our members, uh, Samantha Gilbert, and uh, she's going to talk about uh, how important nuclear, uh, nuclear power has been to her and her family. Samantha. Good afternoon. My name is Samantha Gilbert. I'm a proud member. Oh, you want to make it loud. <laughs> Good luck. I'm a proud member of the Boilermakers Local 13. I'm here today to tell you all what nuclear industry means to me. While I'm honored to stand here today with men like Rick Bloomingdale and Frank Sirianni, who represent hundreds of thousands of union members across Pennsylvania, it's important to remember what it means at a very personal, individual level. I'm proud to be a fourth generation Boilermaker, perhaps even more proud that I'm the first female Boilermaker out of my family. But but I'm definitely more proud of my kids. The nuclear industry allows me to provide for my family. I spent a large majority of my career as a boilermaker working in the nuclear power plants as recently as last week as we completed the Limerick, <laughs> the Limerick generation plant refuel outage. Throughout my career, I've worked countless fuelings and had a chance to be inside four of the state's five nuclear plants. These plants employ thousands of union workers every year for their outages, and I've made a career of making sure that our state's nuclear power plants are up and running every hour of every day. Let me say that again. This is my career. It is not just 30 days every two years. It's 30 days for every reactor we have in this state, all nine reactors, hundreds of thousands of hours of good paying work for people like me and all of you. If these plants close, there is no replacing these jobs. While I'll still be a proud bro Boilermaker, yeah, I messed that up. <laughs> the honest truth is that the job I've had for the last 10 years will be gone. And we're not talking about something that may happen years from now. We're talking about something that will happen in as short as a, little, as a few months. If the legislator does not act now, Three Mile Island will close. And quite frankly, I'm not sure what our future holds. Politicians talk about virtue of rolling up their sleeves, putting in the hard day's work, and providing for your family. I'm proud that I've been able to do that, and I'm proud that I've been able to 
that I've been able to do it in our state's nuclear plants. If the elected officials in the buildings behind me really want to stand up for the hardworking men and women of Pennsylvania, they should do something to save these plants. Talk is nice, but it's time for some action. Let's hear it one more time for Martin Williams and Samantha Gilbert. Next to the podium from the Pennsylvania AFL-CIO, President Rick Bloomingdale and Secretary Treasurer Frank Snyder. Thanks, Joe. Look, everything that's going to be said today is critical to the future of Pennsylvania. And there are people here that are helping out deliver this message. Not, all, not only all of you who work in these plants or get work from these plants, but thousands, hundreds of thousands of other labor leaders from around the state. You, as you know, we represent 700,000 union members in the state of Pennsylvania. And when people talk about family sustaining jobs, they're usually talking about union jobs. Yeah. That's what provides a family sustaining job, is a union job. So we're joined today by other unions, but there are a couple of folks that I'd just like to mention who have helped us every step of the way. Dave Gash from the Harrisburg Region Central Labor Council is in the crowd. Bob Hoffmaster from Reading Burke's Labor Council is here. Mike Trofa from the Southeast Area Labor Federation is here. Darren Kelly from the Allegheny Labor, Fayette Labor Council. Dan Anuska from the Beaver County Labor Council. And one of your co-workers, no doubt. <laughs> Danny Bowder from the Philadelphia Labor Council. And by the way, Pat Eiding had a, a commitment that he couldn't get out of, but he sent his best guy, Danny, here to make sure that he was uh, represented. And as all of you know, Pat comes out of the Insulators Local 14. I think I saw him here somewhere. So he knows our struggle. So. Look, Frank and I are going to split this four minutes uh, because it's important that all of you have all of us supporting you throughout the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Look, Joe Gussler said it, Martin said it, Samantha said it. These are good paying jobs and they provide reliable energy to our Commonwealth and to the region. A lot of our nuclear power goes across the grid to support families everywhere else. Look, one of the things that uh, you, the America, can be most proud of is that every day you hit that light switch, you turn on that heater, you turn on that air conditioner, the power goes on. All over this world, there are places where they can't count on that. But Americans can because of the work that all of you do. Oh, somebody, I didn't mean to pause for applause. I was getting waved out, I think. <laughs> so look, I'm going to turn it over to Frank, but I just want to say one last thing. America works best when we say union yes. Frank Schneider. Thank you, Rick. And, and shortly, we're going to join an assembly of true community servants inside the rotunda. The National Association of Letter Carriers is having their Stamp Out Hunger annual food drive. In a quarter century, they raised over 1.6 billion pounds of food. 1.6 billion pounds of food, that's right. <laughs> to help America's families when they need it the most. They're not looking for a hand out, they're looking for a hand up. And I'll tell you, 1.6 billion pounds of food should be an indicator that the economy is still not working for everyone in this country. And we should not, we should not, and the letter carriers will tell you this, be adding another 16,000 people to the ranks of people who need the services of food by shutting down one, two, any of these nuclear plants in Pennsylvania. <laughs> Thank you.
each and every plant, DMI, Beaver Valley, that, that closes, creates an unacceptable risk into our grid safety and, quite frankly, our national security. And the cost of deactivation or closing will far outweigh the cost of not boosting and reestablishing our global leadership in nuclear energy. Some of Pennsylvania's public officials, and Martin indicated this, this is not hyperbole, this is a fact. There was another business who came to Pennsylvania, and they tried to have deals made and tried to have incentives in which some public officials, state, local, were willing to give millions, if not billions, of dollars for Amazon to locate here in Pennsylvania. Now, I ask you, that was like betting on the Kentucky Derby. We really didn't know. We really didn't know what Amazon was going to bring. We absolutely know what nuclear energy brings to Pennsylvania. Why? Why aren't they exercising the same urgency that they did with Amazon and others with all of you? It's the question we should all be asking when we go and knock on those doors today. I'll test to you that we know the revenue. And I know that if my 85-year-old mother's watching back in Manaka, Pennsylvania right now, she'll say, Frankie, it's going to actually cost more to if you close those plants. And I said, you're right, Mom. You learned. You learned from Congressman Connor Lamb and all the other folks out there that are trying to fight hard to keep us alive. Because once you start to eliminate competition, what happens? The prices escalate. That's exactly what's going to happen. And you know what, sisters and brothers? to our representatives, to the community folks out there, locally and federally. We are not interested at the Pennsylvania AFL-CIO to see Pennsylvania become an importer of energy. We want to take our position as a rightful exporter of energy and provide these great jobs. Just like Rick said, America works best, but I'll tell you what, your fight is our fight, sisters and brothers. Thank you for everything. God bless you. Thanks again to Rick and Frank. Our next speaker in this crowd needs no introduction, but I will bring him up. I consider him a personal friend, Mr. Frank Sirianni, president of the Pennsylvania State Building Trades. Thanks, Joe. How many union people are here today? How many building trades people here today? All right, what a good looking group of construction workers. I'll tell you what, you make me proud. I, I wanna say a couple things. You know, I've been, I've been, I wanna thank you for being here, first of all. I mean, a lot of people made a long journey here and it's important, it's an important issue. But I want you to look behind here. We have Republicans and Democrats together on this issue. It's not, it's not a, a party issue, it's a person issue. And we have people on both sides of the aisle supporting this, and we have people on both sides of the aisle not supporting it. So we have to work really hard to make sure everybody comes together and passes a piece of legislation to support nuclear energy in Pennsylvania. Now, as Marty and Joe and Frank and Rick and everybody's been saying that they can't hear you inside, or they haven't been hearing us inside, some people have, but maybe we need to say, save our nukes. Save our nukes! 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 Now maybe, maybe they heard that. I don't know, but when you go in there, make sure you tell them that, because it's important, okay? It's for all our families. It's for all our friends. And you need to go home after you leave here today, and you need to have your family and friends call your legislature, legislators in your local areas and tell them the need to pass this kind of legislation to protect our jobs and our jobs, is, if you really look at our trades and all the other unions that are here today, we have equal pay for equal people, for everyone. I mean, if, 
there's no difference between whether you're a female or male on what you get paid an hour. We have equal pay and we have equal respect for each other. So let's get these guys to respect us and vote to pass a bill to save our nukes. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Next speaker is from IBW Local 29, Dan Anuscu. Thank you very much. Uh, they asked me to speak today, and they said, uh, you got four minutes. Well, my fellow workers, I don't know if I can just do it in four minutes, but we'll try. I'm from Beaver Valley Power Station. I've been down there since 1986. I started down there in security. My next job that I bid to was house and yards labor. I went on to operations school where I successfully passed the non-licensed nuclear operator school. During that time I was going to night school. I completed my electrical engineering technologies and now for the last 14 years I've been electronics tech. Been down there 34 years ladies and gentlemen. It's a fantastic place to work. I live right across the river from Beaver Valley Power Station, small town of Midland. Well, all of our communities are very affected by the possible closure. I raised my family there in Midland. My two daughters, Victoria and Paige, they were raised there. I still live there. Our communities not only rely on the tax base, on the merchandise that people from the power plant purchase from all the communities, the schools, but everyone that works there, all of the people from the power plants, and that is not just Beaver Valley, that's all of the nuclear plants in PA. Our communities rely on the people living there. We are a community, every one of us. It's not Beaver Valley, it's not TMI, it's not Limerick, it's all of us, we're nuclear workers. It's something that I personally want to save. We have been working hard and I'm so proud that everyone comes out. We were here on a rally on Wednesday, and we're here on a rally today. And we're letting these legislators know how important it is to all of us as a community. We have to keep fighting. I do want to say thank you to all these legislators that are standing with us today. Yeah. These are our friends. Yeah. These are definitely our friends. They fought with us the whole time. But there's a lot of people up in that Capitol right now that are not sticking with us. They, we had come out with different chants. Right here, nuclear power PA. When I say nuclear power, you say PA. And let that ring off that Capitol so they hear us. Enough's enough, time to take the gloves off. We don't have long to fight for this. I want to keep it. I want to pass it on to the future generations. So when I say it, I want it loud. Nuclear power! Yeah. Nuclear power! Yeah. Nuclear power! Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Coming to the microphone now is a gentleman I've known for at least 35 years. I give you House Representative, Mr. Tom Mahaffey. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. It's been a great 35 years, hasn't it? I can tell you that. And I grew up with another guy right over there, Rob Bear. My dad was IBEW 143, baby. We grew up together, didn't we? So before I get started, I want to introduce some of my fellow legislators from both sides. Uh, this is a bipartisan, bicameral issue. And we started the Nuclear Energy Caucus two years ago. We got that information out, we have that information. We show how important your jobs are and how important nuclear power is to Pennsylvania. So I wanna start with the senators, please, if you come to the mic. Uh, I'm Senator Tomlinson and this is Senator Boscola. And we're, we're, thank you. Senator Boscola and I have had a couple hearings to vet this, this issue and I think they've been informative. Ish, informative. We had a testimony from uh, Governor Rendell that said if he could do AEPS again, he would include nuclear. 
We had testimony from Governor Ridge who said nuclear power is essential to the security of not only the state of Pennsylvania, but the United States of America. You folks are very, very important. You provide 40% of our load, which goes into a grid, and you provide 93% of our clean energy, our carbon-free energy. If one of your plants... If one, even two of your plants go down, you could double the cars on the highway and that would be equal to the pollution you would create. It's an amazing fact that came out in our hearings of how clean nuclear energy is, how efficient it is, and how much power you provide. So I just want to briefly thank you for coming here today and, and supporting your families and your jobs. But I really want to thank you for the great job you do for the energy community, not only in this state, but in our power grid in the United States. God bless you and thank you for your support today. I, I'm so excited to be here today. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for coming out. It matters. Your voices need to be heard and you're doing it. You know, I was always part of the Nuclear Caucus. I've been on board um, since day one on this issue, so anybody out here, you don't have to come see me. I get it. I know it. I know that we have zero carbon emissions when it comes to nuclear. I know we can save our jobs. I know it's clean energy, and I know what the right thing to do is. We just have to communicate that back to the rest of the individuals out in that building, some of them whom, I believe, are just catering to another industry. <laughs> Shouldn't have said that, maybe. Uh. <laughs> Gas and oil, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, um, and I said it, and that's what I do. But anyway, um, maybe it's because, you know, being a daughter of a steel worker, um, those values were always instilled on me. Maybe because my husband worked at the Limerick plant about 20-some years ago, and I actually toured that facility. He was escorting me through. And um, I know how clean and the, the energy source is, and I know how safe it is and reliable. Our job as lawmakers is to make sure that our electric grid is resilient, reliable, and diversified. And that's why nuclear matters. It's a key component of a diversified nuclear is part of it. It has to be. We can't do without nuclear and have a diversity in our grid system. That's why I'm here today. Um, I'll see some of you tonight. I know the Boilermakers are having some kind of a reception. You know I'll be there. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Tom. Uh, I'm Gene DiGirolamo, and I'm a Republican. Uh, from Bucks County, and I'm here to stand with you in support of nuclear energy. And, and I want to tell you one thing from, from my colleague, Tom Mahaffey. I mean, you really got to give him a round of applause because he's taken an awful lot of pressure and he, from your, the opponents of, this, of his bill, and we're, I'm here today to stand in support of him. Now, I know you heard a lot of reasons why it's important, and I want to give you one more reason, if I might. There's three young people that are standing here. Can I bring them up? Can you come up to the front? And they have signs. Stand right up front. Here's you. Hold your sign up. Hold your signs up. This is about our families and the future of Pennsylvania. That's what this is about. Of course it's about the 16,000 jobs. Of course it's about the 40% of the energy that's generated in the state from nuclear power. But it's about the future of our young people and our family, and that's why we gotta get this bill up, and that's why I'm on the committee, I'm a co-sponsor of the bill, and I'm gonna work as damn hard as I can to make sure we get this passed. Thank you. Good afternoon, I'm Dave Millard, Columbia County. I worked at the Susquehanna Power Plant, IBEW 1600, uh, for 20 years, 30 years in the power industry. And you heard it all today, reliability, affordability. You know, it, it's very convenient 
when we flip that switch on and we want that reliability. And I know that to tailor all of our energy into one industry will not work. They can't meet the demands of power all across Commonwealth in any type of a vortex. We have to have nuclear. And what we're being asked to support here is a clean energy. Who could possibly not be in favor of a clean energy? You know, everybody's out there harping on air pollution and everything else. Here you've got a tried and true proven energy that's clean. And it provides a lot of good paying jobs. And the message that you have to give inside that building is a ripple effect that it will have on their school districts, that it will have on their local businesses. If we take you out of the mix, we, take, we, we create a big void in this economy in Pennsylvania. So that's an additional story that you need to get across to them. Listen, I'm with you. I'm a co-sponsor on, on this legislation. Let's get the job done. Thank you. Smile, we're on TV. You know we're on TV now, right? You know we're on TV, kids. Got to smile. When you go home, Grandma's going to look at it and say, why weren't you smiling? Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. I can sit here and stay that. You're not going to hear about how my grandfather was an electrician, how my uncle was an electrician, how my brother is an electrician, how my son's an electrician. You're going to hear how I am an electrician. A card-carrying member of IBW Local 98. I'm the one who installs the switches and installs the lights. And I may or may not have worked on one or two nuke plants, a couple of refineries, five kids, three grandchildren. It is about our future. And we can't throw it away. We all understand that there needs to be some more work done to the legislation how it is today. But it's not something we can drag our feet on because it attends the thousands of workers that this is going to affect and their families. While we talk about 10,000 workers, right? what about their families? What about the small businesses around them? The nuclear industry has to stay, and we are going to protect it. But one thing you don't have to do as you go into capital, when they come in, you're going to go into so many stories, says, my great-grandfather was a steel worker. My great-uncle, second, he worked in the coal mines. Okay, let them know where you work today. It's today, it's not about yesterday, and they need to support you. They need to support all of us. And as we said, I don't wanna get in too much because I have a real passion here, like most of us here. This is a bipartisan piece of legislation, a bipartisan. That means we came together. Washington don't come together. Here in Harrisburg, we do. And we can do this and save the industry. And I look forward, because you don't have to come and ask me what my vote is because you already know, because my dues are paid up to the end of the year and my international vice president's right there watching me, Mike Walsh. <laughs> all right, enjoy your day. Thank you for all you do. Thank you to all my colleagues in the House and the Senate for supporting me and supporting this bill and supporting all of you. Yeah. This is so important. What a, what a beautiful day. God is shining down on labor right now, and we love it. But if we get real quiet, we don't hear anything. We don't hear nothing, right? Nothing's being done in that capital right now. We are pushing as hard as we possibly can, but nothing has been done so far to save your jobs and save the nuclear power plant. So we gotta get this done with your help today. And that's why I introduced House Bill 11, the Keep Powering Pennsylvania Act. This is so important that we stand here, not in front of each other, not behind each other, but shoulder to shoulder to make sure this legislation gets done. It is truly, it is truly about reliability and resiliency. It's about environmental benefits. It's about our future. It's about taxes. It's about how it's going to affect our economies where these plants never going to close. But if they would close, how it would hurt our communities. But at the end of the day, it's all about you, 
labor and making sure these plants stay where they're at and stay open and make sure you have a job for now and forever. These, these come, these, we were, we had, these nuclear power plants have been built by labor, have been run by labor, and now we're asking you to save it through labor. We had hearings in the House, we've had hearings in the Senate. We've gone through this, we've heard from our opposition. This is not an easy vote. This was not an easy bill to introduce, but it's the right thing to do for Pennsylvania. It's the right thing to do for our, our working men and women, and it's the right thing to do to make sure that we have clean energy for years to come. When we talk about the 16,000 jobs, Eddie, you're right, it's all about it's not only about these nuclear power jobs, but it's all the jobs affiliated through the, what, what, has, what has happened with nuclear power and how they have harnessed their, their jobs to the nuclear power plants. It is so important that we get this right. You know, jobs, in, jobs today shouldn't be taken for granted, okay? These are great jobs. They are family-sustaining jobs. They help out our youth. They take us to places where we need to be. And I'm gonna talk about my dad because I love him to death. He's the guy that got me here where I'm at today. His values and him being a, an IBW 143, it's because of the hard work he's done to help build TMI and Susquehanna plants. We have to acknowledge that if it weren't for labor, this wouldn't happen and we wouldn't be here today. So what I want you to do, and if you can, get out your phone and I need you to text LABOR to 52886. That's LABOR to 52886. Now two is T-O, just so everybody puts that in correctly. This is gonna get the message back to our elected officials. This is gonna be one of those things that we use in social media to make sure and they understand how important these plants are to us. We invest tens of billions, tens of billions of dollars into these reactors each year. There are so many people that come to our neighborhoods to help out and make sure these plants are safe and reliable. The safety and security, the efficiencies of, the efficiencies of these plants is bar none one of the best. And I've been in these plants, I've been in all five of them, I can tell you, you guys and ladies are doing a fabulous job. Thank you for what you do. If this legislature decides not to act, this is irresponsible and irreversible. We cannot change this. They need to act, they need to act now. Truly diversified baseload power is needed in this state. It has to stay in this state and we need to continue to work hard to keep it right here in Pennsylvania. I'm proud and so proud to be here with Labor today. I'll tell you, we have supported you on many, many other issues, but I need your help right now. And my fellow colleagues need your help right now. I need you to get in there, and I need you to tell all our other colleagues how important this is to you, your families, the youth, and how important it is to Pennsylvania and the United States of America, and make sure that we keep these plants open for the next 50 to 100 years because they run because of labor. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. I love Dan's, Dan's right. When we say nuclear powers, PA. PA. Nuclear powers. PA. Nuclear powers. PA. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Let's hear it for Tom Mahaffey one more time. I want to thank all of you for coming out today. And before we part, let them hear you one more time. Run the bill. Run the bill. Run the bill. Run the bill. Run the bill.